Welcome to World Code. Updates your daily briefing on everything happening around the world. The world was stunned. Philippines sitting on trillions, the new Saudi Arabia of tech, flashed across global headlines. Overnight, the Philippines transformed from a nation known for its beaches and diaspora to the epicenter of a new global gold rush. Geologists had uncovered rare earth deposits of unprecedented scale, enough neodymium, dysprosium, and terbium to power the planet for decades. The president's live announcement promised a new dawn, a leap from developing nation to global powerhouse. Stock markets soared, tech giants scrambled, and the world's attention zeroed in on the archipelago. For Filipinos, hope surged. Could this finally end generations of poverty and keep families together at home? But beneath the euphoria, anxiety simmered. With great treasure comes great risk. The Philippines was no longer just a beautiful destination. It was now a key player in the world's technological future. The story of this discovery was only just beginning. The nation stood on the edge of a new era, its destiny rewritten overnight. What exactly are rare earth elements, or REEs, and why do they matter so much? Despite the name, they're not rare, just hard to mine in useful concentrations. These 17 elements, with names like neodymium and yttrium, are the secret sauce behind modern technology. Your smartphone, laptop, electric car, and even wind turbines rely on them for their powerful magnets and vibrant displays. They're also critical for national defense, used in jet engines, missile guidance, and advanced medical equipment. Without REEs, the green energy revolution and much of modern life would grind to a halt. Until now, the world depended almost entirely on a single supplier, making the supply chain fragile and vulnerable. The Philippine discovery isn't just about minerals. It's a lifeline for global tech and security. Suddenly, the world realized how much it needed what lay beneath Philippine soil. The balance of technological power was about to shift. Manila became the world's new tech capital overnight. Private jets landed, hotels filled with CEOs, diplomats, and engineers, all eager to stake a claim. Leaders from the US, Japan, and Europe rushed to congratulate the Philippines, but behind the smiles was fierce competition. Tech giants and automakers scrambled to secure their future supply chains. The Philippines was no longer just a recipient of aid. It was a kingmaker in global technology. News crews set up shop, and the nation's diplomats found themselves at the center of high-stakes negotiations. For Filipinos, it was a moment of pride and possibility. The world was watching, and the next move belonged to the Philippines. The discovery wasn't just economic, it was a geopolitical earthquake. For years, China controlled over 80% of the world's rare earth supply, wielding it as a tool of power. The Philippine find shattered that monopoly, redrawing the map of global influence. Suddenly, the Philippines held leveraged new alliances, stronger partnerships, and a central role in Indo-Pacific strategy. The US, Japan, and Europe rushed to build ties, eager to secure access and break free from dependency. Stable, competitive pricing and secure supply chains now seemed possible, but the stakes were high. China wouldn't give up its dominance easily. The Philippines faced a new, great game, balancing offers from global powers. Every decision would shape not just its own future, but the world's technological and political landscape. The nation had become a key player in global security and prosperity. The world's eyes were fixed on Manila's next move. The promise of rare earth riches electrified the Philippines. Dreams of jobs, modern hospitals, and world-class infrastructure filled the air. The government spoke of a sovereign wealth fund to secure prosperity for generations. But hope quickly gave way to debate and fear. Who would truly benefit, ordinary Filipinos or foreign corporations and local elites? Environmentalists, indigenous groups, and religious leaders warned of irreversible damage and social unrest. 
The nation was split. Some saw a path to prosperity, others a nightmare of destruction. The discovery unearthed not just minerals, but deep hopes and anxieties. The Philippines faced a choice between rapid development and protecting its people and land. The stakes had never been higher. The fear wasn't unfounded. It was rooted in painful history. The Mar Copper disaster of 1996 left rivers dead and communities devastated, a permanent scar on the national psyche. Rare earth mining is notoriously dirty, using toxic chemicals and producing hazardous waste. Tailings ponds can leak, contaminating water and soil for miles. Radioactive materials often lurk alongside these minerals, raising the stakes even higher. Indigenous lands and biodiversity hotspots are at risk. Local communities, dependent on clean rivers and forests, fear they'll pay the highest price. The promise of wealth comes with monumental environmental challenges. For many, the cost of mining could be far greater than the reward. The ghosts of past disasters haunt every new proposal. The nation erupted in debate. Industry leaders and government officials promised a golden age, jobs, growth, and a first world future. They argued that modern technology and strict regulations could manage the risks. Environmentalists and NGOs countered with images of polluted rivers and destroyed forests, warning of a poisoned legacy. Indigenous communities, whose ancestral lands sit atop the deposits, demanded a voice. For them, this was about survival, not just economics. The youth mobilized, demanding both prosperity and sustainability. We want jobs, but not at any cost, they declared. The government faced pressure to listen to all voices, not just the powerful. The debate was fierce, passionate, and deeply personal. The Philippines stood at a crossroads, its future hanging in the balance. The world watched as the nation searched for consensus. The burden now fell on the nation's leaders. Rapid exploitation promised wealth and global influence, but risked environmental ruin and social conflict. The nightmare, a resource curse, corruption, inequality, and a poisoned land. The alternative, a cautious, sustainable path, rigorous studies, strict safeguards, and real benefits for local communities. This would be slower, but could build lasting prosperity and justice. The choice was stark. Follow the path of squandered riches or become a model for responsible resource management. The world's corporations and governments pressed hard, but the real test was wisdom and courage. The fate of the Philippines and its people hung in the balance. The next decision would define a generation. The world watched as the Philippines faced its defining moment. Every move was scrutinized by governments, corporations, and global media. The pressure to move fast was immense, but so was the opportunity for transparency and reform. International attention could empower local voices and demand accountability. The nation's democracy, leadership, and commitment to justice were on trial. Strong, independent regulation and anti-corruption laws were essential. The benefits had to be shared fairly, with real community participation. The rare earth discovery was more than minerals. It was a chance to redefine the nation's future. The path ahead was risky, but filled with promise. The Philippines stood at the crossroads of history, its soul and its story still being written.